So where is Bitcoin headed? Look at this massive week for Bitcoin and crypto and uh, the stock market hasn't been as action packed as much as uh, Bitcoin and crypto, but I think uh, something major is about to happen. So uh, that's come in and uh, we'll examine what is happening on Bitcoin. There are some major signals going off now. And as always, this is uh, Pablo Heeman, you know, uh, coming to you from this time. I'm not from a beach, but I'll give you one guess where where I am. OK, so basically a um, couple of weeks ago, I was th thinking there could be a big push up in crypto and Bitcoin. And um, in my discord, if you I mean, this video is going out to my discord first for the folks who are in my discord. Uh, you remember me saying around here that um, Bitcoin hasn't crashed yet around, I think, January the 8th. I think it was around January the 8th. Uh, oh, this is a around the January the 8th around here. Uh, that was a sad day. This is the Sunday because that was the deadline. That was the deadline for uh, the uh, for Genesis and uh, Grayscale Bitcoin. And I said that was the deadline. There's been meant to be some legal actions. Bitcoin didn't go down, but it closed the actually closed the Sunday, closed the weekly high. Um, you had the bad news with FTX. That was the crash of FTX there. The bad news didn't make it go down. The bad news with Genesis and Grayscale didn't go down. So therefore, and he's holding this key support level around 16,700. So therefore, we're probably going to get a push up. So we've um, stopped shorting everything and went long. BNB, Solana, uh, we went long um, HT. And uh, what's the other one? Uh, and uh, Waves. The, the one we should have gone uh, more than anything else is probably APT. Uh, which is confirms the theory I had, which is all the ones that have been shorted the most, the cryptos that have been shorted the most should bounce the most. And um, we were shorting APT as well. But of all the ones we, st and of course we stopped shorting before the bounce, of all the ones we could have longed, APT was the one to long. But however, Solana, um, the call came in from me at, at around $9. If you're in my Discord, you remember this. And now it's around 27. So that's a 3x as well. Not bad overall. So where is the market going now? Um, so I'm going to show you guys some pretty big signals. Here, see, for example, is the SPY. That's the uh, SP500. It's been it's sitting on this major, major, right, trend line. It's tested once, twice, three, four, five, six time now. Six time, right? Uh, in the short term, it can break down and go go touch 362 or it can break up. But however, in the medium term, I'm seeing the next three to six months, I think it's going up. And the reason why is because of this, uh, as I've shared in my uh, Discord. Uh, by the way, this video goes out to my Discord. And as always, um, my Discord sees it for about two days before I make it public. So we can have a look at here. Essentially, it's what we call a extreme strong breadth breadth meaning how wide the market is like it, they call it a 10-day New York Stock Exchange advanced versus decline so what that means just quickly what that means is basically this you have stocks that are something like two three thousand stocks listed on the New York Stock Exchange you have some of them are going up some of them going down on the same day even if the index is going up individual stocks can still be going down Right when the when when the index is going up, when the when the Nasdaq or the SP 500 is going up that day, some individual stock could still be going down. The problem with the market we had for the at the end of that bull run in late 2021 was that indexes were going up, like for the Nasdaq. But what's driving the index is like about five stocks, like Apple, Microsoft, you know, Google, uh, Tesla. Those stocks are pushing it up, but the rest of the market is actually weak, um, like more than 50, 60, 70% of the stocks probably went down on a normal day, but because of Tesla and Microsoft and Google pushing up and Apple pushing up, so the index was going up, it looked like the market was going up, but it was actually being very weak. Now the reverse is happening. Now what's happening is basically for 10 days in a row, the, well, the 10 day average of advanced versus decline where stocks going up versus stock going down is more than two to one, more than two to one. So two thirds of stocks are going up rather than going down. And this ratio has maintained over a 10 day range. That's what we mean by, 
this 10-day New York stock, stock Exchange advanced decline. And when that happens, basically over the next month, three months, six months, 12 months, returns, look at this, are usually very, very good. Very, very good, right? Doesn't always work out like this. And this goes all the way back to 1962, right? Sometimes it's a negative, but that's a very rare instance. So another way of looking at it is these are the times, the green dots of when the signal came out, right? Works pretty well. But sometimes, just be careful, it might pop up and then have a big crash, which is what I think could roughly happen in the next 12 months or so. So 2023, I am now thinking, is a push up in the first six months, in the first six months, maybe even nine months, but in the third or fourth quarter, later in the year, recession comes and we, boom, we do something like this, like uh, we, we do a repeat like of the 1970s. And that makes sense because this period was very bad stagflation, very bad stagflation. Or look at this signal in the 1970s, right? Uh, which is what I think the situation we're in right now, stagflation, which is a small push up, but then comes down and finishes about the same spot, right? Uh, otherwise, this signal has worked pretty well. Another way of looking at this is to look at the NASDAQ rather than looking at the New York Stock Exchange. Because remember, the New York Stock Exchange has a lot of stocks, which may not be in the SP 500, may not be in the NASDAQ. So if we look at the NASDAQ, the 10 day breadth, right? Thrust buy signal, basically look at this buy, 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 buy. These, that's the latest one. These have been all pretty much pretty accurate, pretty accurate, right? Another one to look at is the SP 500. Uh, this is the New York Stock Exchange as well. It's been, that signal has worked out of the 33 times it's fired in, since 1949, 1949, keep that date in mind. It has worked pretty well. So basically look at all the buy signals, right? You guys can freeze frame and see all the buy signals, right? It's worked pretty well. But, so should we jump in and start buying everything? There's always a but. Nothing is 100%, right? Eve, have a look at this. This is from 1929, that's the Great Depression, to 1949-ish, 1947, 1949, when the World War II ended the Great Depression. They had to fight a great war, a world war, to stimulate enough production to basically get the world out of, um, out of uh, 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 the Great Depression. So during this period, there were 65 times, twice as many signals fired, right? But look how bad it was, right? It didn't work, it didn't work, right? So the question now is basically, are we in a period like 1930s, 1940s? Um, people have made the argument that we are similar to 1947 right now because we have high inflation, and very high government debt, which is similar to what was happening in 1947, the situation in 1947. However, um, I personally think chances are this signal could work again and should, probably should work again. So I'm not 100% about that. You can never be 100% about any signal. So uh, I am buying stocks, particularly in Asia and I'm um, dollar cost averaging in more on the cryptos when they pull back, Bitcoin and altcoin if they pull back. So the reason why is because this signal has worked for all of the last 73 years since 1949. And then to say, okay, it stopped working today, right? And it's gone back to now we're in the 1940s again. Now our situation is similar to the 1940s again is a pretty big call. I do think our situation now is different from the last 13 years where the, the Federal Reserve has done the, uh, the quantitative easing or printing of money. I do think our situation is probably different from the last 20 or 30 years because we haven't had stagflation for the last 20 or 30 years. However, however, I don't think our situation is different from the last 70 years. I could be wrong. To say that the 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 cycle or the, the economy we're in right now has reverted back to what it was like in the 1930s, 1940s, and this is kind of the beginning of the Great Depression, is a really big call. It is possible. I, I cannot, I think there's a 
five to ten percent chance that we are probably heading into some sort of depression, maybe even a big one. But it's probably good odds that this signal still works. If it doesn't, then it means we're probably headed into a Great Depression again, and then the cycles are repeating again. Um, that's say if this signal still... Remember this, for the last 70 years, the signal, the probability of this signal working is very high, it's like 92%. This time, I think, because of the environment has changed, um, to make us more like 1947 when the signal wasn't working. So I'd say it's probably 60, 70 percent. I'd say this signal will work. Um, so which is not high, super high confidence, but I do think it's worth buying. So it's not financial advice. But personally, as many of you know, I have been buying, uh, uh, you know, more Asian stocks because it is obvious right now that Asia, especially China, is leading the rally. Why? It's very simple, because the Federal Reserve is hiking rates, hiking rates, tightening to kill inflation. Whereas in China, inflation is only 2.1%. They're in a COVID lockdown. They're, they're repeating what the United States is doing like in, in um, uh, March 2020. They've just opened up. Their stock market has shot up. Uh, the Hong Kong stock market especially has shot up. So that is obvious that the if we get a mini bull or a big bounce in the first six to nine months, of 2023 then it's going to be led by china right it is going to be led by china and hong kong um, and so far we're seeing that in crypto as well so another that's not the only indicator i am going on another reason why um and uh, and i am looking at the stock market first before looking at cryptos because the stock market as we know I know, yeah, I understand Bitcoin has bounced to 23K, 22K right now. Big deal. I mean, if you look, look at that on a chart, it went from 69 down to 15 and then bounced to 22K. It's no big deal. But personally, I do think the Bitcoin bounce will continue. Probably into the high 20s, maybe into, into the low 30s. In an extreme scenario, somewhere like 40K area is possible. How do we know that? Well, we know that because one, we think stock market is gonna bounce. Why do we think stock market is gonna bounce? Okay, here are more clues we can look at. So for example, um, here is a picture of global liquidity. What I mean by global liquidity is, is when, Remember how everyone said, oh, the Federal Reserve is printing money, printing money? Well, every other government, you know, the Australian government is printing money. The, the, the uh, UK government is printing money. Everyone was doing QE, everybody, including China. So basically the amount of liquidity or the amount of money M2 that's out there, if you count all the major nations like UK, Europe, U United States, of course, and China, Japan, it was rising, rising, rising. And that's why you had that massive pump in Bitcoin. Then everybody into QT mode, or they stopped QEing, which means they stopped pumping money and it was falling, falling, falling. But lately, look at this. I mean, this is a yearly chart, right? Yearly. So lately in the last two months or so, boom, you've had this uptick, right? You've had this uptick. Where does that come from? That comes from Japan and China, right? Basically, as we all know, as we all know, and if you're in my Discord, I've been talking about this a lot. Basically, since uh, about late October, no, early November last year, I've been saying I'm dollar cost averaging more into Chinese stocks. And I think they're, they've changed their policies 180 degrees, which means they are cutting int interest rates more. They are doing QE now. When everybody else is hiking rates and doing QT, quantitative tightening, China is cutting rates and doing QE, quantitative easing. I don't care if you like them or not. I don't want to get political here. I'm just here to analyze the markets. And China is obviously a very important market for Bitcoin. Why? Because it's the second largest economy in the world. Second largest economy in the world, right? And also, Japan has been, has been relatively doing, well, they're still doing QE. Yeah, they've tightened their yield curve a little bit. But mostly they're still doing QE. They've just have they just haven't been as tight as they used to be. So that's why we've seen that little uptick. And check this out. So if we if we line up, oh come on. 
The yellow is the SP500. If we line up the SP500, right, people were expecting a one more leg down, a mega crash, and it didn't happen. Um, I was expecting that, but I didn't say it was gonna happen straight away. I said sometime in 2023. Right. Now it looks like it could be delayed even into early 2024 because, again, this is global liquidity, which is liquidity where M2, where all the money that's been pumped into the world by all the major governments. Pumping, 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 coming out of COVID. Here was the COVID crash. They decided to pump money. Look at this sudden rise, pumping, pumping, pumping. And then inflation too much. The Fed said, said we're going to QT, 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 QT. But then in late 2022, Chinese government said, we're gonna start pumping money. Japan also doing QE, so that's the number two and number three economy in the world, right? Pushing up liquidity. Liquidity is up again, and that is why there's so much buying breadth. That's the signal you saw earlier. The 10-day buying breadth on the stock market is rising again, is rising again. And that's why you saw so much earlier that, uh, uh, that, that uh, there's, stocks not crashing and in fact they're getting a small bounce here this i do expect will keep going up which means which means that uh stocks probably in the next three months or so to six months goes above four thousand and might head towards four thousand six hundred might be even higher four thousand six hundred and four thousand eight hundred ish will be the new high it would at least in my opinion get to four thousand six hundred to between four thousand six hundred to be to uh, 4,800, somewhere trying to touch a new high. Um, now, one way we could look at how important, this is, um, let me let me just do this on a, okay. So right now, this is the SP500. Um, short term, it can, as I said, it can pull back if it does. 376 is, 375 is one level of support and next level of support, 362. It depends on what the Federal Reserve says and does, could shock the markets. If they come out with a 50 point hike, which I don't discount, I think it is possible, Fed still comes out with a 50 point hike, then it takes it to 362. But either way, I'm expecting a breakout, a breakout from the SP500 in the first three months, and then for the next six to nine months, I think it can get to grind to about this area, which is 460 or 4,600 on the SP500, and eventually might even try to challenge this 480 or 4,800 on the SP500. Um, whether it breaks into a new high or not, can't I can't know at this stage, but I am expecting a move from the SP500 to up around here, based on what we have seen. This is, um, of course, this is very good news for Bitcoin and uh, altcoins. So for Bitcoin, I'm going to show you guys the signal. Um, if you're in my Discord, you've seen this from me and also from Tony, uh, Tony Cosentino. And that is the, how important the Chinese market is to Bitcoin. Uh, if you don't believe me, just look at how well this signal works and it has timed a bull run or a mini bull run in Bitcoin almost every time. So basically we are, the chart I showed was using the Chinese uh, 10 year yield and every time it bounced, right? The chart that Tony showed is more refined and it uses this Chinese 10 year yield to divide against the, the US dollar, right? And then using an average to show where the, where the pump is coming from. Okay, so here we are. Um, here we are. The, the reason why the signal would work is because of this. And, um, you know, um, and if people, if people, I speak a lot about China in my Discord, but however, um, social media, like on YouTube or, or TikTok, I don't speak about it as much because, you know, there are a lot of, uh, a lot of people who don't know, who actually don't know what's going on in the world. They want to believe, really want to believe CNN and Fox News and, uh, and good luck to them. You don't have to keep on watching from here, but it's a, it's a very important signal that the, the losses are all yours. But for the people who want to listen, basically, the reason why the Chinese liquidity situation, as measured by the Chinese 10-year yield, is so important is because of this. Have you noticed 
almost half of crypto or more are actually Chinese or Chinese influence. So CZ, the richest man in crypto, the owner of Binance, is Chinese. Justin Sun, another you know billionaire in, in crypto, founder of TRX, now the owner of Hobby, is Chinese. The um, the owners of um, uh, founders of um, other exchanges such as Hobby, you know, uh, Gate.io, you name them. Like I mean, you know, all of those. Bybit, um, well, what's it called? Um, Bitget. They're, they're all Chinese owners, right? Now, but you, now you say, what about Sam Bankman Freight? He's not Chinese, he's this Jewish American guy, right? And he had the second largest crypto exchange in the world. Okay, let me ask you this. Where did Sam Bankman Freight start FTX? You can Google this if you want. The answer is he started in Hong Kong. There you go. For three years, FTX was born out of Hong Kong. It's only like a five year old, year old company. So the first three and a half years was in Hong Kong. And then you say, well, what about crypto.com? What, Pablo, what about Crow, crypto.com, right? Crypto.com is uh, owned by this guy called, uh, I forgot his name, like you can look it up, right? Mazajak, well, whatever. Let me ask you this. Where this, did this Mazajak guy work? The founder of uh, Crow, crypto.com, for the first 13 years of his life before he founded crypto.com in Hong Kong, right? So think about this. You put all of that together. What it says to me is basically this. My theory, I'm gonna explain why this thing works so well. I, I don't know why it works so well, I'm just trying to give you an explanation of why it works so well. Basically, every time when China pumps money, some of that money need to escape China, need to get out of, out of the CCP control, which, because there you can't exchange currency freely over there, right? We all know there's capital control. So therefore, when they need to exchange money, those billionaires, or those corrupt officials can't get, say, 10 billion, 20, 30 billion US dollars out. So what they do, they use a, a they use crypto to get out, they use Bitcoin. And that's happened over and over and over again in history. That's my theory on why China is so important to Bitcoin price. Now, that's my theory explaining it. Um, and also plus it's the number two largest economy in the world. Uh, and if you look at per capita, purchasing power parity terms, in PPP terms, China is the largest economy on earth. Simple as that. If they're printing money, right, that's important for Bitcoin. So without further ado, let's look at how well this signal works. This is Bitcoin price of, uh, I could find as far back as September 2011. So. This is our Chinese yuan, ten, China 10 year yield divided by the US dollar index. When this is rising, right? When this is rising, so we have a first cross of the signal here, right? When this is rising, it basically means Chinese 10 year yield is rising. That means Chinese economy is heating up. There's more liquidity and China is starting to do well. Chinese economy heating up, US dollar going down. US dollar going down, meaning more money flowing into China, China's doing well relative to the US. On this signal, right, Bitcoin was, was here and uh, was only at $11 and then had this major pump, right? We're using it for, for entry signals, not for exit signals. Another entry signal here, right? And Bitcoin was 81, the next pump took it to 700, almost, well, 900, like a 10X. And then, here was another signal, even though you could say this is a fake out, right? 2016, uh, you could say here's a signal, but that, that wouldn't be bad either. 2015, let's say, uh, this is when what Bitcoin was at 230, right? That would have been the low as well. Here's another signal in 2016, and that's when Bitcoin was at 467. And of course, the proper signal came in 2016 November and that's when Bitcoin was at 700 and the eventual run was up to 16 oh sorry twenty thousand dollars that was the last run and now let's have a look at this again uh, that would have been a fake out you need a cleaner signal from this uh, from this chart so here was another signal and that was when Bitcoin was around six thousand and it went on to a 
small bull run to 11,000. Uh, so we need a cleaner signal, maybe like a three week. Maybe we could try a three week. Yeah, let's try that. Uh, so make the signal slower, but more accurate. Okay, let's try a th three week signal. So we don't really have a proper close above. So that's say until here, that's June 20, uh, June 2020. And that's when Bitcoin was at 9,000 and it ran to 69,000. Uh, yeah, and now we've had that signal again. Now we've had that signal again and it's pumping up in major fashion. Okay, so um, the reason why the Chinese market is so important to Bitcoin. I think I've explained it already. Now, these are all these signals now telling us Bitcoin is probably going to start some sort of run. And usually this signal is good for something like six to 12 months, maybe even more, right? At least three for the next three, four, five, seven to, to even 12 months, Bitcoin could have a big run. Now, what I mean by a big run, this is where there are other guys who have this chart as well. This is where I am different in my interpretation to them. They're saying, okay, every time the Chinese market is heating up, there's liquidity, Bitcoin makes a new all-time high, new all-time high. So we've got another signal here. It's going to go to a new all-time high, like 100K, 120K, whatever, right? Now, <clears throat> some guys would draw this chart and say, this line is going to come out here. This is, that would be, I don't know, 140K, 100, 100K, whatever. This is where I disagree. I disagree because <clears throat> some of those guys are only looking at one indicator and not really understanding what that indicator means. <clears throat> Think about it. Previously, every time China turned up, right? It did so at the same time as the United States. China pumping liquidity would happen at the same time as the United States. They used to cut rates together and hike rates together. That's why they were good partners, right? That's why they had, <clears throat> China had a huge trade surplus with the United States and that's why Trump was pissed off. They were working like partners, like a, like a couple in a marriage and that's why China was exporting a lot to the United States. But then US started saying China is too much of a threat <clears throat> to US's position as the top dog in the world as the top economy, China's fast catching up. So therefore, we need to take China down. And the way they do that is, that stopped China from exporting so much by decoupling from China. You've heard that word, right? They're trying to decouple from China. So when they try to decouple from China, China's gone ahead and said, okay, whatever, you wanna decouple, and no, we decouple. So what China's done is for the first time, when US is hiking rates, China is not hiking rates, and China's cutting rates, cutting rates. So. The reason why, the reason why I am saying that this time we are probably not going to get a, a pump to a new all time high, but probably a small pump to say somewhere like 32K, like high 20s, 32, 34, looks about right. Might even go as high as 40s, right? I mean, without, without looking too closely at, at a Bitcoin chart Basically, I'm thinking a pump to stop around somewhere around here, which is what, 30, 32 to 40 K area, seems possible. Why not a new all time high? Because the previous times when it made all time highs, right? It wasn't just the Chinese who were pumping, who were pumping Bitcoin. Each time when this, when this signal came, each time when this signal came, it was China, yes, China was pumping Bitcoin, but also United States was also cutting interest rates. And and um, uh, 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 Japan was cutting interest rates and Australia was cutting interest rates. Everybody's cutting interest rates. So global liquidity, so global liquidity, this thing, this thing was being pushed up by everybody. Now you have a situation where US, UK, EU, Australia, New Zealand, everybody else is trying to push it down, you know, including all the smaller countries like Brazil, Poland, Turkey, well, yeah, Turkey relatively, but China and maybe Japan are pushing it up. So it's not a powerful push, it may not take it to all time, new all time high. 
if it does, it's going to be kind of a flatlining, slow push like this, right? So which is why, unless, unless, of course, the Federal Reserve pivots and says, we're going to go to QE, like the way we did back in 2020, like smash it, stop this QT nonsense and get it all the way down to QE, drop interest rates to zero or near zero, like 1% or below and start QEing again, we're not gonna see that kind of pump to new all time highs. So this is basically, I hope you've, you've understood the principles I've been talking about. One, a lot of liquidity coming to the US stock market, it looks like the SP 500 is gonna make a pump. And two, uh, it looks like Bitcoin's gonna follow and make a pump because the Chinese liquidity is coming in, but without the, the Federal Reserve liquidity. And the other thing to keep in mind is as the F Federal Reserve is pumping, as the Federal Reserve is pumping Bitcoin, oh sorry, it's QT, so you think Bitcoin should go down, but what is happening is, as I've been saying in my Discord, the US Treasury is actually spending a lot of their, um, uh, their, their money because they've got a debt ceiling coming up. So they're pushing, they're pushing it up. Um, the, if you're on my Discord, you should understand that concept by now. The US Treasury has about $400 billion on their account, the TGA account, Treasury General account. And because they've got a debt ceiling coming up, we all know US, US government has run out of money now. So they're trying to spend that as much as they can. So they take that number down to zero. Therefore, when they're negotiating with the Republicans, they're playing a game of chicken saying, we have no money. If you don't approve of our new debt ceiling, debt limit, and let United States government borrow more money, then United States government will shut down and it'll be your fault. So it's a game of chicken between these politicians. So as I've said last month in my Discord, I think I've, oh yeah, I've said this in, a, in an earlier video in, in early January as well uh, on TikTok. Basically, the United States Treasury is gonna spend something like 400 billion dollars in the next four or five months when they in that debt negotiation whilst qt is trying to take about 95 billion dollars out of the market every month so i said many times in my discord and you know on social media that for the next few months for the next few months four to five six months there is effectively no qt in the united states in other words there's not really qt happening because you have one part of the government, which is Federal Reserve, and the argument's, okay, it's independent, okay, whatever. You have the Federal Reserve trying to QT, trying to reduce supply of money, but you also have the the the, the um, Treasury, right, playing its little game, pushing up the supply of money. So therefore, QT has been neutered, QT has been neutralized, QT has been canceled. So you have no QT are happening right now. Interest rates are high, heading to about 5%, and my stay go flat around there, go pause. But China is now pumping, cutting interest rates and pumping money and doing QE. So that's bullish for the stock market for a bounce, right? For a big bounce up. You might even call it a mini bull. That's also bullish for Bitcoin because Bitcoin is going to follow that. And that's, of course, means the old coins will follow that bounce up. But as I have been saying all along in this in about seven or eight months from now, watch out because the Fed probably has to hike rates more because of what China is doing, right? China and US used to cooperate, and when they cooperate, things were easier. Now they want to decouple from China, so China says, okay, they will just lower interest rates and pump more, mo pump more money into the world. What that does is make the Fed's job even harder because head the Fed is trying to take that money out of the world. So Fed the Fed could hike interest rates to easily above 5%, like 5.25, 5.5%, even 5.75%. It's possible to counter, to counter what China is doing. And when the Fed does that, I cannot see any other option except the United States and you, you, UK economies, those economies in the world will head into a recession and probably a bad one. I've been saying this for a long time. It's been delayed because of what China is doing. It's been delayed because of what the US Treasury is doing, but it's coming eventually. I think there's a 90% chance we'll get some sort of recession. If not in the third or fourth quarter of 2024, then probably in the first quarter of 2020, sorry. If not in the first 
third or fourth quarter of 2023, then probably in the first quarter of 2024, we get some sort of recession because the Fed cannot keep rates up this high for this long. When that recession comes, Fed is gonna pivot, not pause, not pause, but pivot, which is cut rates. And when they do, it's gonna be a big crash. So yes, I do think Bitcoin is, um, is probably rising for now, uh, but just keep in mind that, um, uh, just keep in mind that in, I'm not expecting it to make, I, I'm not expecting it to make new all time highs. I think this is a big bounce or you could call it a mini bull can get to high 20s, low 30s or even into the 40s. But however, the chicken's gonna come home to roost sometime, which means recession, probably a bad one. And US and European stock markets, Australian stock markets will get, will take a big crash when that comes. Chinese stock market probably pulls back as well, but it might be kind of in a neutral area because they're still trying to grow and they're still kind of trying to like, you know, trying to, uh, uh, trying to push up. Okay, uh, thank you for all for your time. I'll have more updates coming soon. This is Pablo Heyman once again. Catch up.